What's up Epic Python developers? Some time ago, roughly three years ago, I made a series of videos about data structure called KD3 and as the language for implementation I choose Python. You can find the videos here. I really recommend you to watch them before continuing watching this video because you can consider this video a follow-up to the KD3 in Python series. In this series I explain what is KD3, what it's used for, how to build this data structure and how to implement it in Python. So it's quite interesting. I really recommend to check the previous videos. Recently, I received a pretty interesting comment uh, on one of those videos asking a question, asking clarification, and uh, today I'd like to take a look at it. Let's take a look at that comment. Hi, sir. Timestamp. To compute the distance between the splitting plane and the point, shouldn't it be the difference between values in other coordinate other than axis? Suppose if we are computing distance of point from x axis, we ought to consider y values, right? Because x value is going to be the same. I'm not really sure what you mean here, but according to how we build the KD tree, the current axis is the axis by which we sort and compare the points while we're building the KD tree. So by the definition, the current axis of the node is the one that we have to compare. On top of that, this person sent a pull request to the original repo because I actually uploaded all of my source code of the KD3 series to, to the GitHub. You, you can check it out in the description. And that what caught my attention. Let's take a look at that pull request because it's quite interesting. And here you go. Here we have the implementation of the KD3 closest point. And on top of calculating the current axis, we are calculating the next axis. And here, when we are about to take a look at an opposite branch in hope to find a better solution, we actually compare by a different axis, by the next axis. And as already said, according to how we build the KD3, it is not correct because the current axis according to how we build is the one that we should compare by. This is by the definition of how we build the KD tree. But let's take a look at the implication of this particular idea and let's try to come up with a counterexample when this approach won't work. For more details on how this entire code works, watch previous KD tree videos because we implemented all of that from scratch across three videos. So I cannot possibly explain everything what's going on here. And another interesting thing, we actually store taste data in SVG files, which is quite convenient uh, because you will be able to open an SVG file uh, and uh, face a legacy situ situation because this file was created three years ago and I already updated my Inkscape. What a nice thing. Okay, so I'm going to press OK or whatever. So why Inkscape and SVG is convenient? Because I'll be able to come up with data sets by uh, moving things around, copying them, adding them and so on and so forth. So it's, it's quite convenient. It's quite convenient. So and what we do here, we first read the SVG file, then we extract in the pivot, basically the point for which we're finding the closest point. Then we extract in the expected closest point, of course, and then we're extracting all of the available points. The first thing I want to do, I want to simplify testing different changes. Right now, the current file that we're reading from is hard-coded. What I want to do, I want to organize a loop and iterate through all of the available files, build a KD tree and check if the closest point was found correctly. Having such loop will simplify checking different changes and on top of that, I'm going to run that loop on continuous integration. So every time somebody submits a pull request, it will be checked against several test cases, which is quite convenient. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to take that and put it down below where we're going to have the loop. On top of that, from these points somewhere, we are building the KD tree. And then we're supposed to use this KD tree closest point function to find the closest point. We have to provide the pivot and it will just find us the closest point. So let's take a look at how many files we have. So we have points.svg and points2.svg. So let's create a variable called svg files and we're going to put all of those files there. Points SVG points to SVG. As I already mentioned, I want to organize the loop where I iterate through all of the files and I basically test them. So I read the current SVG file, then I extract its pivot, then I extract the expected closest point. It's actually called expected because I think in the future it will be easier to distinguish found point and expected point. Then we extract the points and build the KD tree. The next thing we have to do, we have to calculate the found closest point by calling KD KD tree closest point where we provide the KD tree that we just built and the pivot for which we're finding the closest point. After that, I want to compare distances between pivot and expected and pivot and found. And after we found the closest point, let's just print expected and found. Expected. 
something like this. So this is expected and this is found. And I think you also have to actually wrap that in, in tuple, if I remember correctly. And now you can see the output, but it's quite unclear for which file we're reading the output. So let's do the following thing. Before doing anything, we're going to print the name of the SVG file we're checking. And on top of that, to make it slightly more readable, I'm going to indent the expected and found. Uh, now it looks a little bit better for points.svg, we expected this point and we found this one. On top of that, I want to also align everything a little bit better so it looks good. So we can clearly see that the current algorithm that we're using calculates everything correctly. On top of that, I would also like to show the distance between pivot and expected and pivot and found. Let's do something like that. In parentheses, we're going to type distance, it's going to be floating point. And here we're going to calculate distance. Oh yeah, this is quite interesting. So in the previous video, we used a function distance, but some time ago, somebody submitted uh, another pull request uh, where they suggested to use square distance instead of just distance, because uh, if you use square distance, you can eliminate a square root, uh, which is quite expensive operation. But I don't think it's that important, because if we really cared about performance, we wouldn't use Python in the first place. But they emerged it anyway. So the, the point here is that what we do with the distance, we just compare it. And if one distance is smaller than another one, the square of that distance is also going to be smaller than the square of the another distance. So calculating that square is kind of redundant if the only thing you do is compare distances. Let's do the following thing. Let's introduce a couple of new variables. First one is going to be expected distance and the second is going to be uh, found distance. And let's just calculate them. Expected uh, distance is going to be distance squared between pivot and expected and found distance is going to be distance squared between pivot and found and all of that is going to be square rooted something like that and on top of that i forgot to do formatting here as well here we go uh and here we go now we have an actual distances found and expected and everything looks okay and on top of that i want to actually add a condition very interesting condition basically if the found distance is greater than expected distance that means we screwed up somewhere. And uh, in that case, let's actually print a big message saying that failure found worse distance. Let's check if our tests pass. So we don't see any failure so far because the found distance is exactly the expected distance, which is nice. Okay, so let me quickly take all of my changes because I think they are uh, pretty useful changes. Uh, so maybe they're going to be useful for somebody. I'm going to uh, commit them and I'm going to push them to the repo. Um, automate, automate testing. I think it's a pretty good commit message. And let's take a look at the changes that were submitted in the pull request. I already fetched the branch of the pull request. So here it is. Here is the branch. Uh, and these are my automated testing changes. So what I want to do, I'm going to create a separate branch called test. And I'm going to merge the uh, changes from the pull request to my branch. So my testing code and the changes from the pull request are merged together. So here are my changes. Here are my automated testing. And on top of that, in the implementation, we can see the other access from the pull request. So our changes are merged together so we can test them together. Uh, let's try to test the suggested changes in the pull request. Everything seems to be fine, right? Maybe it is the right way to implement the closest point operation. But let's take a look at that a little bit closer. Let's fire up Inkscape and create a circle. Align everything uh, correctly. Blah, blah, blah. Imagine that this circle is going to be our pivot. And on top of that, uh, we're going to have a bunch of other circles. Let's actually color them slightly differently. So this is going to be a one point. This is going to be another one. And let's put another one somewhere here. Here is a very interesting example. This one is the point. These are the rest of the points. Which point is the closest one? Well, uh, visually, visually, we can clearly see that this is the closest point. So our algorithm should actually find this one. But let's try to understand what exactly is going to happen. We're going to build the KD tree from these three points. Since this is a pivot, it is not participating in KD tree. So what's going to happen? First, we work with the X axis. So all of the points are going to be sorted by X axis. And after that, the array of this of those points is going to be split in half. 
After continuing building the KD tree, the array is gonna be split like that and like that. Now, once we have our KD tree, how can we find a closest point to this particular pivot? We're starting from this, from this split. We compare by X and see that this point is actually on the left side. So what we're doing, we're trying to find the closest point on the left side. From what I can see, the closest point on this side is this one. Maybe I wanna even bring it a little bit closer something like that. This is the closest point, not this one. After that, according to this algorithm, we're comparing the distance between the best and point, basically the distance between this and this, and the y coordinates of the splitting point. So we're comparing distance and y coordinates between these two things. Let me actually draw what exactly we're comparing. We're comparing this line with this line. And obviously this line is bigger than this one. And according to this condition, there is no better solution on the right side at all. All right, so let's actually test all of that and see if it works or not. I'm gonna save this document as three. And let's add that particular file to the test cases. And let's run it and see if it works. Uh, would you look at that? The expected distance is way smaller than the distance of the found. So it worked exactly as I predicted. To fix that, we always compare by the current axis and everything works correctly. So I hope I answered your question. I'm going to commit and push all of the changes that I made in this video. And also I'm going to attach this new file. And yeah, that's it for today. Thank you for your questions. And I see you in the next video.